everybody, my name is Carrie and I'm an educator at the Seymour Marine Discovery Center. And I am really excited to show you an experiment that you can do from home that showcases some of the research going on at the Long Marine Lab at UC Santa Cruz. So what you'll need today are two glass jars or clear plastic, as long as you can see through them. You're gonna need vinegar, some salt, and then you're also going to need two shells. So for this experiment, you can use seashells. That would work really well. But if you don't have seashells like me, you can use eggshells. So I have two eggshells and I cleaned these very thoroughly. I used a hot water and a little bit of soap. So what we're going to be looking at today is CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and how carbon dioxide is changing our oceans. So humans are putting more and more carbon dioxide into the air. And this is through things like factories, the cars we drive every day, and so many other human activities. And all this carbon dioxide in the air, some of it absorbs into the ocean. And through a chemical reaction, the ocean water becomes a lot more acidic. So through this experiment today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how this acidifying ocean affects some of the creatures that live in it. So our shell here today represents animals with shells in the ocean. And there are so many animals with shells in the ocean. We can think of crabs and clams and oysters and snails. There are so many animals that rely on their shells for protection. So in this glass right here, I have seawater. And I didn't get this from the sea, I made it myself, but it is our seawater today. And it's just regular tap water with some salt added, about a tablespoon of salt. So we're gonna put our first shell in there and make sure it sinks. And then in our other one, it says vinegar. So this is going to represent our acidifying ocean. And vinegar is very acidic. So if you think of other acidic things like lemons, you taste them and your mouth puckers up. Coffee can often be very acidic as well. It makes your mouth do that pucker. We are going to put our egg in and then we are going to add our acidifying ocean water. And you want to put enough vinegar in and water that it is fully submerged. Your shell is fully submerged. So next, now that we've added both of our liquids to our shells, we are going to wait and watch. So it's gonna take around 24 hours and during that time, check on your shells pretty regularly. And then you can write down any observations that you notice of any changes or anything else. And right now would be a really great time to write down any hypothesis you have about how you think this will change, what you think's gonna happen. Uh, so I will see you in 24 hours. See you tomorrow. Hi! It has been about 24 hours, so welcome to the future. I have some really interesting results that I'm really excited to share with you. So how about we zoom in and take a look at what I'm looking at. So in our ocean acidification water, the shell actually started to break down and crack, and there's a lot of bubbles as well. It got covered in bubbles throughout the process. And then in the regular salt water, the egg looks pretty much the same. I don't see any differences and it looks pretty good. So throughout my process, I checked on these pretty frequently and I started to write down the notes I was seeing. So for my notes, I had a column that has the date, the time, my observation, and if I was looking at the salt or the vinegar egg. And you can do your notes any way you want, but this is a really simple way to keep all my data straight. So what we're looking at in our ocean acidification glass is the things that can happen to some of those animals we talked about yesterday with shells. Their shells can crack or become brittle or even dissolve. And the more vulnerable these animals become, it can have a huge impact on the entire food chain. So when we're looking at these glasses, it can seem really scary thinking about all those animals. But luckily, there's a lot of really cool research going on to try to figure out the effects of ocean acidification and what we can do to help. 
So one of these labs is the Crocker Lab at UC Santa Cruz. They're looking into how different species respond to ocean acidification, and which species are actually able to help minimize this effect. One really cool thing they found out is that seagrass can actually act as a buffer for the ocean acidification. So there's research going on in our very own backyard at UC Santa Cruz to help figure this problem out. And there's also things that we can do to help figure this out as well. So we can change things in our daily life to reduce our carbon footprint. One idea is to try to drive less. Maybe you're able to walk to the grocery store or ride your bike. Another idea is to dry line your clothes. It's going to be hot this summer. Maybe you don't need to use your dryer. You can also unplug your devices while you're not using them and unplug your chargers when you're not charging. And you can also try to reduce the amount of meat you eat in your diet. These are all really simple things we can change about our daily life to reduce our carbon. Thank you for joining me today while we learned a little bit more about ocean acidification and looked into some more of the research. I hope you try this experiment at home and I hope you have a great rest of your day.